Hi, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the CR event today. We appreciate everyone joining us for our discussion, the second one this week. I'm Matt Pietrasi with Climate Advisors, which is part of the CR Consortium with Aid Environment and Profundo. We provide sustainability risk analysis for investors, banks, and NGOs. Today, we'll be discussing our recent report on palm oil company, Wilmar. Wilmar's uptake in sourcing of certified palm oil products in this refining and processing business, as well as its own consumer brand franchise, has come under increased uh, scrutiny. Recent trends contradict various stakeholders' perception of Wilmar's leading ESG credentials. We will look at whether Wilmar has the resources to be a leader on the ground and the financial implications, risks, and opportunities of much stronger compliance. In our discussion today, the audience will be on mute. If you have any questions, please add them to the Q&A function, and we will hopefully get to them during the Q&A after the presentations. Our speakers today will be Harard Reich of Profundo and Akita Miraningram of Aid Environment. Without further ado, I'll hand it over to Harard Reich of Profundo for the main presentation. Okay, thank you, uh, Matt. Um, let's start with the agenda. Um, at first, uh, Wilma's activities upstream and downstream and its positions in the palm oil value chain will be discussed. Uh, secondly, we will discuss Wilmar's NDPE policy. And point three, we will investigate the uptake of and commitment to by Wilmar of certified sustainable palm oil in its whole supply chain. Uh, subse subsequently, uh, the links to deforestation and human rights violation um, uh, will get attention. This has been a very important reason, by the way, to investigate Wilmar in this CRR report. Um, bullet five, it is, a worth, it, it is worthwhile to confront Wilmar's profits on palm oil versus the cost of compliance of having a sustainable position. And for investors, the outcomes from rating agencies are crucial. Um, very important for finances is the impact of deforestation policies uh, in the UE, in the European Union or by the European Union and in other parts of the world. Uh, the financing analysis is needed to understand the financing risk uh, for, for Wilmar. And uh, finally, uh, how will the current analysis impact the risk and opportunities in Wilmar's share price? Um, first, let us look to Wilmar's global positions and activities. Uh, Wilmar is a large Asian-based athlete business group active in the whole world. In 2021, its sales reached 66 billion US dollars, um, as you can see. Um, uh, in 2022, analysts foresee 71 billion US dollar. Uh, the first arrow shows Wilma's high sales exposure to China, around half of its total business. Wilma has also a large exposure to Southeast Asia, as you can see, 20 to 23 percent. That's also near the first arrow. The second arrow shows the percentage contribution of plantation and, um, and milling, of which Wilmar's uh, palm oil plantations are a main part. This total upstream sector contributes only uh, around 5% to global sales, so it's quite small, relatively, uh, in this company. Uh, Wilmar's strategy is to grow further downstream and move further to the consumer sector and brands. Currently, the whole downstream sector is much larger than the upstream activities, more than 15 times larger. Um, in downstream, Wilmar operates uh, in feed and industrial products and in food products. Uh, let's go through these groups in feed and uh, industrial products. This group consists of processing and selling of animal feeds, non-edible palm, palm products, other oils, other agricultural commodities, oleochemicals, gas oil, and biodiesel. The large refinery footprint of Wilmar is part of this group. Um, the other downstream uh, group, that's food products, consists of processing and selling of edible food products, including vegetable oils produced from palm 
and all seeds, sugar, flour, rice, noodles, specialty fats, margarines, chocolate, also snacks, bakery, dairy, soy protein, uh, starch, and sweeteners. This group includes branded. Uh, this this group includes the branded consumer products uh, business of uh, Wilmar. Uh, finally, important to note uh, is that the current uh, CR report, this report about Wilmar, was based on public sources as well as interviews with various stakeholders like uh, investors, asset managers, and NGOs. Uh, Wilmar initially cooperated, but in the end did not want to comment on the report, which felt uh, uh, strange and remembered me to the practices of food and beverage companies that I covered in the 80s of the last century. Um, a large part of Wilmar's activities is dependent on palm on the palm oil value chain. Wilmar itself says that 41 to 50% of its global revenues is exposed to palm oil. Um, in, a 20, in a 2021 report, Chain Reaction Research calculated that Wilmar is the number one company earning most in the palm oil value chain. This is an important observation. Uh, the table shows that Wilmar is ahead of large consumer companies, which in their own role, are able to generate very high margins on embedded palm oil. In 2020, Wilmar will have generated at least 703 million US dollar operating profit on embedded palm oil. I say at least, as RSPO data have shown a higher number than the 18.9 million tons uh, uh, embedded palm oil. Uh, including palm kernel oil, Wilma will have seen 25 million tons of palm oil going through all its channels, or 20 to 30, 25 to 30 percent of the global volume market. This is a dominant position, not comparable to any other company. Uh, the table at the left-hand side of the of the slide shows Wilma's palm plantation business generating 4 million tons of fresh fruit bunches, and that was 2021. Uh, this leads to less than 1 million ton CPO, uh, crude palm oil, from its own plantations. The tonnages in the downstream sector, as you can see, are much larger, but this, in this table, they also contain, of course, the other food products. However, the already mentioned 25 million ton palm oil in processing and trading is clearly much larger than the 1 million ton CPO in the own plantations. This picture shows all potential activities in the palm oil supply chain. Wilmer is active in nearly all blocks, but not in the supermarket, retail business, and also not really in home and personal care branded products and, uh, and livestock. Uh, the consequence of Wilma's broad activities in the whole supply chain is that it can be confronted with uh, NDPE violations, which can enter in each block where it is active. Note that Wilma is not only sourcing for, from its own plantations, but from many others. It has hundreds of palm oil suppliers, which on their turn, get material of millions of smallholders. As a consequence, Wilma can be very easily linked to any NDPE uh, violation in one of its million indirect suppliers. And because of its 25 to 30% volume dominance in the global palm mark market, it could feel responsible for this. Uh, related to these violations, the financial risks that Wilma could face um, are Stranded asset risk, market access risk, financing risk, and reputation risk. Wilmar has been an early adopter of NDP policies within the sector. This has started a decade of declining deforestation related to palm oil. Currently, Wilmar has nearly 100% traceability to mill level, and in RSPO, it has been leading in implementing processes. So that are really positives. However, 
in becoming a much more sustainable company, there is a large challenge. Wilma's narrative is that there is a structural problem in accelerating uh, sustainability and accelerating RSPO certification of palm oil as the, as the customers, as its customers, do not want to pay for it and just want the lowest price. Therefore, globally, there is a big oversupply of certified sustainable palm oil versus the uptake versus the demand. Of produced palm oil, 19% is, uh, is certified, while the uptake sticks at around 12%. However, here the strange position of Wilma comes to the spotlight. Although it is dominant in the palm oil market and it has a large consumer brand business, its own use or uptake of certified sustainable palm is relatively low and below that of the global production percentage of 19%. We will see that in uh, further on in the presentation. In its large processing and trading business, Wilma's uptake is only 1.76 million ton or 7%, only 7% of its own sourcing. So 93% is not certified. And even worse, in Wilma's own consumer brand business, it lacks transparency, whether it is paying a certified price for palm oil. Chain reaction research estimated that a large part of its consumer brands, of Wilma's consumer brands, are, are sourcing palm oil that is not certified. We estimate that these consumer brands source 2.1 million tons palm oil, while Wilma's uptake in its refineries is only 1.76 million tons. So if all these tonnages are used in its own consumer brands, then, uh, then that is still not enough. And then nothing is left for large, large clients like Unilever, PepsiCo, and uh, which all report a high uptake of certified sustainable palm oil, et cetera. This inconsistency gap is a huge reputation risk for Wilmar. Um, on this slide, the third arrow uh, on this slide shows that the low level of uptake by Wilmar in its processing trading business, mainly, mainly its refineries, and that is only 7%, as you can see. 93% is non-certified. Uh, this while the global market produce, uh, produces 19% uh, certified palm oil. Um, these, uh, uh, um, you can also see that Wilma's own plantations are producing circa 40% certified sustainable palm oil to be seen in arrow one and two. In, in total, that's less than 1 million ton. Um, the weak outcomes occur at the moment that Wilma continues to be confronted with links to deforestation and human rights abuses. And that's on the next slide. Uh, you can read these uh, violation and problems much more extensively in the report uh, on our chain reaction research uh, uh, website. Um, in the report, uh, we give a balanced view in our in our uh, in our view a balanced picture of Wilma's achievements and links to deforestation. Um, in recent years, Wilma was mentioned at least thirteen times in CRR reports. This was the reason for the current, uh, for the current report. Wilmar is regularly mentioned with trading links with the top 10 deforesters in Palm, which is published every six months by Chain Reaction Research. Uh, recently, a report on African palm oil showed Wilmar's links to land grabbing. Earlier reports showed that Wilmar, as a palm oil uh, leader, does not have a cross-commodity NDPE policy regarding companies that are not deforesting in Palm, but continue to do so in mining and in their timber activities. And CRR reports show that Wilma's financial accounts and annual reports contain no indication of material financial support to smallholders. Moreover, local Indonesian press is reporting about pollution and land grabbing by Wilmar. These uh, 
Uh, these reports are often not known by, uh, by investors. And let's be clear, CRR also reported about positive steps by, by Wilmar, including suspension of sourcing palm oil, for instance, to Gamma, and its NDPE status versus other refining, uh, refining companies. However, at the same time, there is a trend going on that Wilmar's cooperation with NGOs is deteriorating with the company quitting various platforms. Well, the low uptake and the high number of NDP violation all occur in a context of a company that is earning a lot on embedded palm oil. Uh, Wilmer is not telling us, nor to others like uh, uh, the Carbon Disclosure Project, how much it is uh, spending on the cost of response in the, sustain, in the sustainability of palm oil. The company says that it is, that it is embedded in all its operations. Uh, this is, of course, very vague. We calculated here three scenarios. We know that the company is already sourcing 1.76 million certified palm. So looking to the whole business, still 23.5 million ton is non-certified. If you only look to the consumer brand business, scenario C can be applied, then still uh, around 0.4 million ton is not certified. Uh, the current spending on this non-certified is zero. Uh, we could assume that the cost of seven, around 70 uh, FTEs uh, plus programs, which uh, Wilmar has, can be valued at 17 million US dollars, and that this is already used for the uh, 1.76 million tons of certified palm its sources. Then. And without further transparency, scenario A gets very relevant. In case of scenario A, a massive 1.5 billion US dollar would still need would still be needed. And if we apply the 65 US dollar per ton, which was calculated in an earlier study by Chain Reaction Research, um, that would uh, that would go to that 1.5 billion. If we also add the replanting support, which we uh, calculated in another report, and a cash flow bridge, uh, which is necessary for, uh, for, for, for smallers to wait for the harvest uh, uh, to bear fruit, then another 345 million US dollar would be needed. And let's be clear on this, a 25 to 30% dominant leader should be able to share these costs with others in the chain, and maybe uh, also reach economies of scale. So then the total cost might be much lower. Also, we have not yet added segregation costs needed for the EU market, as we stated in our Tuesday, last Tuesday webinar. That report contained new information, new calculations on, on, on segregation. Uh, the additional costs, they are 2.8% versus net revenues in that scenario A, and 6.3% versus palm oil related revenues based on Wilmar information. The EBITDA could be hurt by 48%, which is material, but which could be neutralized by raising palm oil products uh, related prices by 6.3% and pass these on to fast moving consumer goods companies or by sharing costs with other players in the chain. We know from calculations for Procter & Gamble and also for biofuel mixes that the impact on the consumer price would be less than 1% in the end. We are now stepping to... Um, we are now stepping to the investors and the other finances who are confused by the mixed bag of ESG rating outcomes. Uh, Wilmar Flex, various positive ratings and upgrades. However, in other lists, Wilmar has a more negative rating. Note that Wilmar is, is on place number 10,713 of Sustainalytics list of 40,000 or nearly 15,000 companies. 
Also, CDP downgraded Wilma recently in its forest analysis. Uh, investors can be misled by focusing on a selected group of rating outcomes, which have a large variety uh, in those outcomes. Note that agencies have different weightings for uh, environment, for social, and for the governance, for the E, for the S, and for the G, and have different ways of presenting scores. Um, another important point is that research showed that the correlation between the various rating outcomes is very low. It is not strange that, for instance, the European Union is striving for standardization. A standardization could be supportive to accelerate the green financing. An element yet not fully recognized is the upcoming European Union deforestation regulation and various other regulations and directives. Uh, last week, uh, CRR issued a report and early this week held a webinar on the European Union deforestation regulation and its implications. Uh, this slide show, uh, shows the four crucial outcomes. For finances, the uh, bullet number four uh, uh, is, uh, is important, which concluded that palm oil actors might be confronted with market access risk, reputation risk, and the need to raise compliance costs, including the potential need for segregated supply streams. Um, if we calculate the consequences for Wilmar, including the U including UK and US deforestation regulation steps, a lack of compliance could lead to a volume decline and, uh, and net profit impact, unless the company makes the right steps. A 10% volume decline might impact profits by a minus 28%, a negative 28%. Uh, finally, the last bullet says that the uh, European Union uh, Sustainable Finance Disclosure Regulation already led to Wilma being placed in a, on an exclusion list um, of a large uh, European Union based asset manager with regard to its sustainable funds. Um, is exclusion a big problem? Uh, well, the arrow here. Uh, shows that European Union financial institutions have contributed to the identified financing of, of Wilmar, and that was uh, in 2013, 2020, uh, 2070 period, it was around 17%. Uh, it declined to 9%, that's uh, on, the, on, the, on the right hand side of the table, uh, in the period 2018-2021. Uh, note that note that these uh, these these numbers they are forest adjusted numbers. So in reality, the absolute numbers are much much larger. The gap in financing uh, in the in the decline of the European Union financing has been filled by Southeast Asian finances. Gradually, the financing of Wilma moves away from the place where regulation is most strict. We can call this leakage in financing. Uh, looking to Wilma's current uh, market valuation and the risks uh, and opportunities, the current valuation is below that of the peer group. Please see the, uh, the first arrow for this. The most often used uh, PE ratio and enterprise value EBITDA ratio are substantially below the group, as you can see. Uh, Wilmar is 11 in enterprise value EBITDA and the peer group is 17.6. Um, the second arrow focuses on the fact that Wilma's current valuation, its own current valuation, is below that of its own five-year average valuation versus nearly all multiples. Uh, you can see the difference. It are all minuses. Only in price-to-book value, it's a little bit higher than the five-year average. But in the most important ones, the company is, uh, is already facing a relatively low valuation. Um, and then a third one, taking into account the value of its listed Chinese activities. We know the Chinese activities are quite huge. It's around 50% of the business. Uh, and of these Chinese activities, 
10% uh, is publicly listed, 90% is still controlled by Wilmar. Uh, this entity, it has a high valuation. Um, and as I already said, it's contributing a material part to net profit, as you can see in US dollar terms, 801 versus 1871 for Wilmar. Um, and the, uh, the enterprise value, which would be remaining for Wilmar's business is then even negative. So uh, it's, it's the minus 1 billion, as you can see. So it seems that investors have already thrown the towel and other investors have lost quite some value in a company that seems not proactive anymore, not leading. And how could Wilma recover? A first step might be to raise the transparency in its own consumer brand business concerning the uptake of certified sustainable palm. And secondly, move to a much higher uptake of, the, of sustainable palm across the whole business so that independent smallholders get much better financial support and are incentivized to join certified mechanisms and hold deforestation, which can hold deforestation. That is what sustainable investors could welcome from a 20 to 30% dominant leader in a market. So we finish with uh, some key, with the key findings. Well, Wilmar is the leading company in the Palmo supply chain with a 25 to 30% presence. It's very dominant. The company has a high profile in NDP and RSPO steps, but is lagging in implementation on the ground and in the full supply chain. In particular, the lagging uptake in its own consumer brands make, Wil make Wilmar's skeptical remarks about its own clients really inconsistent. Also, the argument about too high costs on best-in-class sustainability execution is inconsistent with its high earnings on embedded palm oil. Finally, the mixed outcomes in ratings do not support investment value of, a of the company. Investors could engage on more transparency, segregation of streams, and the full uptake of certified palm to break the vicious circle in the certified supply demand game and to prevent the deforestation regulation from hurting the company, Wilmar, even further. This was the last sheet and I hand back to, um, to Matt. Thanks, Gerard, for that great presentation. Um, we will now get to the Q&A part of the event. If you have any questions, please um, put them in the Q&A function and we will um, try and get to them. So the first question is, um, what can Wilmar and other companies like them do to show that sustainability is just as important as, um, as profits? Uh, that is a good question. Um, my impression about, uh, my impression about Wilmar, and it's also a bit, uh, the, 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 the feedback that you get when you talk to investors and to NGOs is that uh, uh, this, this company is always sailing, uh, let's say, on the wind uh, aggressively. Uh, it's very much focused on profits. Uh, that's very nice in first instance. It has been very nice uh, for its shareholders. But if you look to, uh, but, 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 but a, a larger focus on sustainability uh, might really help the valuation of this company in the end. And yeah, then we are talking about, um, about the arguments that I uh, mentioned um, in, 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 the, in the last slide. Um, and they are still on this slide, as you can see, uh, is that the, the, the company uh, should, uh, should have a much better uptake of uh, certified sustainable palm oil. Uh, it should have uh, uh, a much better uptake of, uh, of certified palm in its own consumer business. Uh, the transparency should be uh, much better. Um, and yeah, it, 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 it might already start, start to work on, uh, 
uh, on segregation because that will be the outcome in the European Union. It might become the outcome also in the United States and in the UK. Great, thanks for that, Gerard. Next question. Um, could you compare Wil Wilmar's performance versus its peers um, in regard, its peers in the um, palm oil industry in regards to its sustainability performance? Um, if, you, if, 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 if you define the peers uh, and, uh, as the uh, palm oil plantations, uh, palm oil plantation comparators, then Wilmer is not doing uh, <clears throat> is not doing badly. Uh, so then it's uh, in, uh, uh, in 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 several ratings you can see that in in their plantation business, in their own plantation business, uh, the company is doing quite well. Um, However, the company, in, even in its own plantation business, is sourcing from millions of uh, smallholders, and then still something can happen there. Uh, but if you put uh, Wilmar in a context of, uh, of consumer good companies, and that's what I uh, mentioned uh, about the sustainalytics outcomes, uh, if you put uh, Wilmar in, an, in, 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 a, in a global food group, then, yeah, then the company is not rated as uh, as best in, in in the group. Then it's um, then 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 it, then it has a relatively low position. And if you put Wilmar in an in 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 a global group of all companies, and that's that 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 number was visible on on one of the sheets, then it's number uh, ten thousand of the total fifteen thousand companies. Uh, but I don't have now a number available for the for the food group. But uh, yeah, it depends how you uh, define uh, uh, in which in which in which group you place Wilmar. What is the peer group? In plantations, the company is doing relatively well. Um, but in uh, you need to take into account that this is a completely integrated company, uh, so it also has responsibility in its downstream business. It has a direct contact with uh with uh with consumers because of its own consumer brands and they could use these consumer brands by uh by taking up 100 certified sustainable palm oil and that is even not happening okay great thanks for for that um in-depth answer so a question now about the upcoming eu us and uk deforestation related regulations. Uh, given that Wilmar's largest share of volumes are sold to the, the Chinese market, do you anticipate that companies like Wilmar will end up with segregated streams, for instance, a US, an EU compliance stream and a non-compliance stream? Uh, that, 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 that might be possible that that will happen. Um, although, yeah, I don't have an indication for that, but uh, yeah, you need to take into account that the uh, European market is relatively unimportant for the company. Uh, the, the, the European market, uh, as you could see in, in one of the sheets, was is around 4% of total sales. And the Chinese market, uh, yeah, that's, that's, by the way, for all the products that the company is selling, include, including flour, etc., and, and sugar, uh, uh, the, 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 the Chinese market is around 50%. Well, assuming that palm oil has the same distribution, yeah, it, it, it might also lead to the fact that 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 that, that, that Wilma might say, okay, we stop sourcing the, the or selling to 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 the European Union, or the European Union might decide uh, if there are no segregated streams uh, from Wilma, then we cannot let 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 you through the the borders. Uh, yeah, then it will stop, and then they will. Uh, they might find uh, leakage buyers. We call it leakage buyers, in uh, in uh, in China and in uh, some other uh, regions in the world. That might happen. And yeah, if if you look to how finances are already moving and how uh, Wilmar is leaving some platforms. Uh, where they are co we're cooperating with with NGOs. Yeah, then it's uh, then it does not feel good for the future.
Thanks, Gerard. The, the next question is in regards to Wilmar's ratings. Would you attribute the divergent ESG uh, rating methodology the, of the different agencies? Is that the reason for the differences in the ratings? Or could those be attributed to the lack of engagement between Wilmar and the rating agencies? Um, I don't quite understand the question. Well, what would you attribute the uh, differences in Wilmar's ratings among the different um, ratings agencies yeah 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 that's 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 that that's because of there is no standardization in 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 rating and uh, there are rating agencies which give a much higher weight to the environment others ratings uh, uh, agencies give a much higher uh, weight to the social element to human rights and the third one gives much higher ratings to, to, to governance. Yeah, and then within these three pillars, there might be also a different weightings for, uh, for, 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 for uh, different elements of, uh, of environment or uh, regarding scope of a company. And there are rating agencies which are focusing on only on the plantation side of Wilmar uh, or relatively heavy on the plantation side of Wilmar. Uh, while, as I try to show, the, 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 the own plantation side of Wilmar uh, is only, they are producing from their own plantations only 1 million CPO, uh, crude palm oil, while they are, um, uh, through all the channels of this company, uh, there, are, there is 25 million uh, uh, palm oil, including palm kernel oil. So um, when you focus too much only on what they are uh, doing on plantations, then you are not really uh, 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 focusing on what is really on, on the elephant in the room, which is the processing and trading business. Great, I thanks hope. for yeah, great. Th thanks for that explanation, Harard. Uh, could you talk about? the acceptance of um, sustainable palm oil in the consumer market. How do you see consumers uh, making, um, helping to make uh, changes in sustainability for companies like uh, Wilmar and also um, FM, FMCGs in the palm oil market? Yeah, we see many. And if you look to the WWF palm oil scorecards, you see many uh, companies, consumer companies, branded companies, moving to a relatively high level of certified palm oil. Um, there are still uh, laggards, but this, uh, this uh, WWF palm oil uh, buyer scorecard is a very good benchmarking thing. Uh, so uh, 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 companies compare themselves with other companies and they try to get a higher position in, in the list and that's working quite well. Uh, so, Consumer good companies, uh, in particular in the Western world and in Europe, they are focusing heavily on uh, on, on certified sustainable palm oil. Uh, in the US, there is still uh, companies are still lagging, and in uh, in China, yeah, that's that, that's 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 also a further further process of of lagging, and uh, that uh, has to be improved. And that's where, of course, where Wilmar comes in. Wilmar has an um, activity, a consumer brand business, which is heavily focused on China and also focused on lower, uh, let's say, uh, more into the direction of commodity type of products. And that means if company or if, if Wilmar is introducing in its own consumer brand certified palm oil, which is more expensive than non-certified palm oil, the prices, the consumer prices, uh, will go up by more than one percent for that type for certain type of products in China, and yeah, that is uh, that might be uh, that might be problematic. And then the uptake uh, in more difficult economic climate in more difficult economic climate might be become a problem for uh, for, for for consumers. Great, thanks, Robert. Uh, next question: uh, Why was there uh, such significant emphasis on RSPO certification and the analysis? Um, while RSPO standards have improved, the premise of Wilmar's approach and and the industry transformation since 2013 has always been 
far more based on compliance with, H, with HCSA rather than certification. Yeah, I've used uh, because it can be measured quite quite easily. Uh, we have used in this analysis the RSPO uh, or and 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 similar certification schemes in order to get a good proxy for how uh, the company uh, is performing in the field. That was the reason to uh, to 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 choose for this uh, for the RSPO uh, rating for the RSPO system in this uh, in this analysis i hope this answers the question i'm not sure so uh on to the next question what um is the plan of cr and others say investors ngos for their engagement with with wilmar yeah um that's 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 a good question concerning CRR. Um, we and that's what I said at the start of the uh, presentation. We had uh, we have had uh, uh, in first instance there was no contact. Uh, we didn't get it. Then later on we had uh, I had, we had contact with with Wilmar, uh, and we had two 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 times uh, one long call and I think another one. Uh, so. Um, and yeah, I hope that it will uh, that, that that this report will have been uh, is on the desk of Wilmar, and that they might come back to us about uh, about how they feel about about the conclusions. And concerning the investors, well, this this webinar is the, the report and this webinar uh, they are the first steps to um, uh, to, to 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 show how uh what, what what the engagement points might be what the engagement reasons that's a better word might be uh, uh, uh versus wilmar great thanks for that Herard. so this next question um is uh relatively long so i appreciate your patience in advance so um one of the listeners says there's one notable novel issue that is repeatedly raised in the CR report, and this concerns the expectation that downstream companies somehow pay up to smallholders and report about that. It is not clear where this agenda comes from and why it is attributed to Wilmar's risk profile specifically. Yeah, that's a good. That's that, that's that that's an excellent question, indeed. Uh, in chain reaction research. Uh, um, reports we quite often uh, refer to the costs of compliance of the cost of setting up a good system uh, to uh, to pay for uh, sustainable uh, palm oil and to get the whole chain more sustainable and to get uh, uh, the, the, the the cash flow to to smallholders and um, yes indeed we uh, we have set up uh, the analysis about the profit chain. We uh, um, published that report last year um, uh, on the chain reaction research, the, the profit chain in palm oil, because we wanted to know who is now really earning the money in palm oil. Uh, and we know the, uh, the analysis and the anecdotal stories in, in cacao, et cetera. Uh, and uh, we have done this analysis before uh, at Profundo uh, in, in soy. And yeah, the, the, the clear conclusion of this kind of analysis is that uh, the large margins on palm oil are uh, on embedded palm oil, uh, on each fraction of palm oil that is used in peanut butter, etc. cetera, that, uh, the, 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 that, that the largest profits are made downstream. And uh, the, uh, the fast moving consumer good companies and the retailers, they earn around 66% of the gross profit, uh, of the total gross profit made in the whole supply chain of palm oil, and 52% of the operating profit in the whole chain of embedded palm oil. So when we, we were also confronted with many uh answers from 
fast moving consumer good companies that it was really very expensive, too expensive, too costly to pay for sustainable palm oil. Uh, yeah, that confrontation is then very interesting. Uh, and uh, if you if you if you take a look to that report, you can see that there are billions of profits made by fast moving consumer goods by the downstream sector in uh, in in yeah, on embedded palm oil. So it is too costly. It will cost some money in first instance, but it uh, we made the calculations for for Procter and Gamble in a Procter and Gamble report that it uh, that the bottle of uh, of uh, of head and shoulders would increase uh, from three US dollars to three U US dollars and maybe one cent if uh, if a first step of uh, of a good sustainability uh, monitoring and verification uh, would occur and maybe if you would also apply the more uh, strict one like I, I, sh I showed in scenario A then it is maybe three uh, US dollars and two cents uh what the re what, what what the consumer will pay so yeah the, 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 there are reasons to focus on the downstream sector and to focus on uh fast moving consumer goods that they could uh really uh, sh uh share in the cost of making the palm oil chain more sustainable because it was their own remark by various uh, uh fast moving consumer good companies branded companies that it was too costly. And that has been the reason, that is the reason for chain reaction research to, yeah, to, to, to make this, these profit streams transparent. Okay, we have time for about a couple more questions. Um, could you talk some about uh, who Wilmar's primary buyers are and how they can help um, ensure sustainability in palm oil supply chain? Yeah. Um, I think that the, 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 there, there, are, there are many large fast moving consumer good companies which will be the uh, which are the big uh, uh, source buyers from the products of uh, of uh, of Wilmar and some are doing already quite some uh, uh, some uh, some work on this uh, Unilever uh, it will be uh, uh, Mondelez it will be Ferrero uh, it will be AAK, uh, all the big buyers, which you can, uh, all the big companies, which you can find in the WWF uh, uh, buyer scorecard uh, on palm oil. You can, uh, those names you can be filled in because all the big names will be connected to Wilmar. Wilmar uh, is uh, a dominant company in the palm oil supply chain. Uh, responsible for 25 to 30 percent of all the volumes uh, through uh, in in the palm oil in the global palm oil market. Good, thanks, Gerard. So, uh, one last uh, comment I'd like to get your um, reaction to. So, um, many companies, including Walmart and most NGOs have focused on ensuring compliance with HCSA, not RSPO. Just in terms of deforestation, it's been very successful in delivering a 95% reduction in deforestation across the industry, which Wilmar has led. However, there are risks, as our report points out, that at least several large Wilmar suppliers have been linked to deforestation for other commodities like gold mining, timber, and soy. So is there a way of, um, expanding the um, scope of like transparency and compliance to, um, to, to broaden the scope to focus on the other commodities too? Yeah, that's a very interesting question. And as we speak, uh, chain reaction research is focusing on this cross commodity uh, NDPE policy. Um, we are currently writing a report on this and um, uh, we, uh, um, uh, I Aid Environment had already a report on this related to uh, timber and chain reaction research already had a report on this related to mining. Uh, this is a very interesting th thing because the big, uh, uh, and we will, what we would like to analyze is whether the 
the, the, the large palm oil companies and sources like Wilmar, and Wilmar is a dominant company, whether they can use their leverage to, uh, to press for this cross commodity um, uh, NDP policy. That means in the end that uh, Wilmar could decide not to source palm oil anymore from a an, uh, 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 plantation, uh, which is uh, itself is not uh, deforesting, uh, uh, which, has, which e might even have an NDP policy, that, that palm oil plantation. But while its sister company uh, in timber or in mining, uh, in, the, in Southeast Asia are many groups and holding groups, while such a sister company might be deforesting in for its timber uh, activities or for its uh, mining, for its coal mining activities. Um, and uh, that, is an, uh, that is a next subject of research for, uh, for uh, uh, chain reaction research. And by broadening the scope, it would encourage more focus on performance um, regards to forest and human rights rather than just uh, narrowly looking at RSPO certification. Um, sorry, I think, uh, what, what can, can you repeat that? Just, uh, yeah, I was just saying the, the broader focus would encourage more of a focus on like forests in general and human rights rather than just simply on like um, certification with the RSPO. Uh, yeah, uh, that's, uh, that, that's right. Uh, yeah. but, but, but the scope the, the scope is indeed, it might be broader uh, uh, on, uh, on also on human rights, but it's also broader. The scope is also broader on, uh, on, on, on the timber and on the mining activities of the companies from which you buy palm. Absolutely. Uh, thanks a lot for that, Gerard. And we're now out of time. And I think we've gotten to all the questions. If we did happen to miss any of them, uh, please feel free to get in touch with us. Uh, this was a really great conversation today. We really appreciate everybody's time. Um, this was our second event this week. And we plan on having more in the fall. So thanks again and hope to speak to everybody soon.